morning from Splitters Farm. Happy Monday. Today is a very exciting day for us. We are going to relocate our guinea fowl Keats into better accommodation, which will be exciting for them. They've been in this little heat box now for about two weeks. You'll remember from one of our very first videos we did that we saw them hatch in our incubator and we moved them into this light box. So we're going to upgrade their accommodation today. So thank you for joining us. Uh, we um, want to give you a quick update on the little piggy that we showed you on Friday. Unfortunately, our little piggy died um, probably an hour after we posted our video. So we're very sorry to say um, he just yeah didn't quite make it, but it, uh, we're happy that he's out of his um, pain and misery. So um, yeah, but the others have no symptoms or signs of greasy pig disease. So fingers crossed, we, uh, we, that's the only one. So if you come in nice and close, Cooper's on our camera today. We are going to relocate our beautiful guinea keats. So as I said, they needed a bit of warmth during the night for the first few weeks of life, but now they're ready to go. So we're gonna put them in this basket here and I'll start by bringing a few of them out. You'll notice they've got feathers now. So a few of these guys are gonna try and fly away. So there are little guinea keats, that's how much they've grown. See how they've got feathers now? And we're just going to pop them in the laundry basket so we can transport them. See if I can get two at a time. There you go, guys. And put the tail over the top just to calm them down, but also to stop them from flying out. Because they are very, very quick. And as I said, these end up going to Boylan's produce so that other farmers can buy them and use them to get rid of their ticks and snakes because as we say a guinea fowl are great for getting rid of ticks on your property you can probably hear one outside calling now that's the female call rain across the weekend which was amazing okay so this is their new enclosure I'm gonna put them down on the ground there while I get it ready so the hay is for the bottom of the enclosure and I'm just gonna show you what we're gonna do with that so we're gonna put the this is where they come in at night and this is where they sleep so they still need somewhere that's relatively warm in there so that they can make a little bed. Now guinea fowl like to roost at night, a little bit like chickens. The other birds that like to roost at night are peacocks, they fly up into the trees. So at five o'clock or when it starts to get dark, guinea fowl like to fly up into the trees as well. So when they're babies, they like to roost or they like to sit on something. So we're gonna put these roosting posts in. sit on something and one on the other side there we go so that's their bedding we'll lock all that up now okay now guinea fowl are on a turkey crumb to start with so we're just going to put a bit of food into our 
our feeder here. And turkey plum is high in protein. Um, guinea fowl can pass away if you give them too much just a chicken one because it's not as high in protein and they need a high protein diet. So we give them the turkey crumb. So we're just getting all of the accommodation set up before we put them in there because it's going to be difficult once they're in there to do all this. So we'll put that in there. And then this is their water bowl. So they've gone from having a tiny little bowl in that in that tea box to a bigger bowl. And all we're going to do is just fill that up. As you would have seen, those guinea fowl are big enough now to fly out of that bowl if they get stuck in there. So they are all good to go. Now you'll notice in their cage they've got a little ladder type contraption that allows them to come into their run area. This is called their run and they can pop in and out as they like into inside in the warm or outside to have a drink and a feed. It's really important that you get um, that, that you get chickens and guinea fowl out into the sunlight as soon as possible because they can develop vitamin deficiencies and it causes their sometimes it causes their neck it's called rye neck or twisted neck and they can develop all sorts of diseases by not getting them into sunlight and not getting them out grazing and picking at grass and getting all the vitamins they need so we are now going to one by one hopefully they don't fly away put them into their new accommodation so here we go And they will just go and check out that little area. Okay. okay. You'll probably find that they'll stay in this little top part for a few, oh, at least a day, just until they get the confidence to go out and explore their run. So if we don't see them out by this afternoon, we might even put a little dish of water in here to make sure that they are still getting fed and watered. Last one. I think I'm going to be washing my uh, laundry basket after this. <laughs> so there they are. You can see them in there. Figuring out what to do. I'll give you a look at them. <laughs> there they are. that's it. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again tomorrow at 10am and we hope you have a fabulous Monday. See you later.